house. I'm challenging you to not flinch during my reaction video. Be whoop. Still drawing those lines instead of looking at the cards. More juice? What's more juice? He has to ask for it. He's choking. Time to institute the Heimlich maneuver and stop bullying your child. It's impossible. It's mac and cheese. What do you mean it's impossible? What is mac and cheese unchokable? All right, the fact that he's yelling, though, makes it a little bit less likely that he's actually choking. If you're yelling, that means you're moving air. 10-year-old boy screams for his life for no reason. He's autistic, severely autistic. Okay, so a child with autism, what we have is an autism spectrum disorder, and we don't know where in that spectrum this child lies. Can't talk, can't make eye contact. Screaming's probably his way of communicating. Yeah, you know, some children that have been diagnosed with autism, one of the challenges that they face is verbal and nonverbal communication. Some children don't have good social cue identification where they can't understand someone's emotion by reading their body language, or they can't speak themselves, or they choose not to speak themselves. His brain can't filter information. It's a constant assault on his senses. I'd scream too. One of the main things that go hand in hand with ASD, hypersensitivity, sometimes to light, touch, sound. And remember, while we're only naming the challenges, there are some positives that can come from a diagnosis of ASD. Some children are super smart. Some have the ability to memorize things way better than the average child. So it's not only about the challenges, it's about the strengths too. ER checks his throat, no obstructions, nothing which means the only symptom was a scream, which is diagnostic of nothing. I completely agree with Foreman. You have a child who was diagnosed with autism, who started screaming, and the parents are very worried about it, and now they're doing like this giant workup with multiple specialists. I wouldn't even know what the consultation would ask of the specialists. Stool sample to check for parasites, blood culture to rule out infection, and ANA for lupus. Because he screamed? I love investigating if there is an investigation warranted. You're checking for ova and parasites and lupus. You can't order tests willy-nilly because false positives are really a thing. Dust, wheat, pollen, the toxin, or something. It could literally be anything because right now your one symptom is screaming. Run a lung ventilation scan. What? Lungs are in the chest too, right? I had a date last night. She screamed. Should we spend $100,000 testing her? <laughs> Why did your date scream? That was a weird revelation. Of course not. This isn't a veterinary hospital. Zing. Actually, the veterinary hospital thing is kind of funny to me because in medicine, we oftentimes say treating kids working in pediatrics is a lot like being a vet because sometimes the children, if they're really young, can't tell you what's wrong with them. So it's almost like treating a dog who can't tell you what's wrong with them either. You know what it's gonna be like trying to put an autistic kid into a nuclear scanner? I don't envy you guys. In those cases, we do sedate. Uh, we give medications like benzodiazepines for temporary sedation. <laughs> Can't you sedate him or something? Could if I don't want the test results to mean anything. Are they doing a CT? If they're doing a CT, you could sedate the child. I don't know why you said that the test won't mean anything. God, did they just break into people's homes all the time? Big shocker. Dad's depressed. And they're getting information on the parents. This is so unethical. This workup on a screaming child is gonna cost $10 million. They're gonna test his sand out of his sandbox? Who's paying for this? I can't get insurers to pay for an antibiotic if it comes in an easy to swallow capsule and they're gonna get insurance to pay for sand testing? Come on. Fecal matter, is there a sample we can look at? Parents have the smear kit, the kid is constipated. Go up his rear and get a smear. Talk about creating a traumatic situation for a child for absolutely zero reason at this time. But somehow, because it's a House MD episode, he's gonna be right. I don't even know what they're looking for in this sphere. They already got an ovum parasite sample. Adam? 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 So what makes fluid? fill the lining of a kid's lungs. Infection, tumor. <laughs> I feel like I'm one of his students just yelling stuff out. If there's a pleural effusion, we have to rule out heart failure. The pleura, by the way, is the lining uh, that covers the lungs. Organs are covered by pleural membranes, which is essentially prevents the organs from rubbing all over each other. So like there's a cardiac membrane, there's a lung membrane. Get the kid an echocardiogram. <laughs> Adam. Very hard to perform an echo as is, but to perform one on an uncooperative patient or combative patient even harder. Uh. Uh -huh. uh. Uh -huh. What? 
What is it? Is his heart okay? No. Echo suggested a conduction abnormality. EKG confirmed it. A conduction abnormality is basically when there's a problem with electrical conductivity of the heart. So basically, in one part of your heart, you have a node that starts your cardiac rhythm and then it travels throughout the rest of the heart. The reason it has to travel throughout this conductive system is because you don't want the entire heart beating simultaneously. Otherwise, it's gonna have all the blood just splat against each other. But if you have the top of the heart beat first and then the bottom of the heart beats, then you can have like a rhythmical pulsation of the blood throughout the heart. Get a lung biopsy. Well, it took a half an hour to get the mask on the kid for the lung scan. Oh, I'm sorry. Was there somewhere you needed to be? What are they gonna do, a bronchoscopy? I don't understand how they're gonna do a lung biopsy. Like, interventional radiology? What part of the lung are they gonna test? This makes no sense. This is brutal. We wanna do a lung biopsy. Lung biopsies usually come back negative, so biopsy a lymph node under the arm. <laughs> Why are they against sedating this poor child? Sedate, please. It will not change your biopsy results and the child will not be further traumatized by this medical experience. Hope is what's making them miserable. What they should do is get a cocker spaniel. Dog would look him in the eye wag his tail when he's happy. Animal therapy for children with autism can actually be quite beneficial. There's less judgment that comes from animals, almost no judgment actually. The interaction that you could have with the animal is so much simpler that it is an easier introduction to human interaction, which is much more complex. Horses, dogs, that kind of thing, supportive animals really go a long way for children who have autism. Not for all, but in some cases. No cancer, because these aren't lymph cells. Then what are they? Okay. Let me try and guess. These aren't lymph cells, so what did he get a biopsy of? A huge sweat gland, an abscess, a dermatofibroma? Oh my God, what could have he gotten? Oh, oh, a teratoma that has hair cells in it. Oh, I can't, I have no idea. Liver cells? Does he have liver cancer that has metastasized to his armpit? What's the difference between cancer cells and liver cells? Why can one pass through walls, but the other can't? Cancer cells are damaged, lets them grow into blood vessels, go wherever they want. So if the liver cells are damaged, liver isn't damaged, the tests were normal. Well, tests on a liver being normal doesn't necessarily mean the liver is normal because the tests that we use to check liver function, which we call liver function tests, is actually a misnomer. They're actually liver inflammation tests that tell us if the liver is damaged, thereby releasing liver enzymes. And if these liver enzymes are elevated, then we know there's a problem with the liver. However, if your liver is so diseased that it's in the end stage of liver cancer, cirrhosis, those numbers can be normal normal because your liver is almost fried and there's no enzymes left to be had. It's not his liver, his heart, or his lungs. It's the calcium carbonate in his stool. He was constipated, parents probably just overdid it. Maybe he ate a bunch of chalk or tums. Or they didn't do it at all. Calcium carbonate's also what's in chalk. Oh! So when you eat some chalk, it isn't toxic. Sure, it didn't cause a pleural effusion. Forget the chalk, this kid's got pica. Take him to a buffet, he's gonna eat the table. Pika. It's a condition where you start eating things that are not edible. Paint off of the walls, mud. Show me what you ate. Adam? Honey? Oh. I don't Adam? know what that was. Some kind of sand fly or sand weasel inside of that sand. It's a microtumor. It started in his lung, which caused a pleural effusion. Then it metastasized to his liver, which made it slough cells. No, it has to be some kind of worm traveling throughout his body. Hey! Kill the lights. I'm seeing them all the time. What are you looking for? He's telling us what he was seeing. Telling us exactly what was wrong with him drawing them for us over and over again. Hello, my pretty. Nematodes. It's not a tumor, Foreman. It's worms. Aha! Is... We said worms. We also said everything else, so I'm not gonna even take credit for it. Animal makes potty in the sandbox. Boy plays in the sandbox. Boy eats the sand. You can probably tell where this is going by now. The stool samples were negative for parasites. Raccoon roundworms are not excreted by their human host. Cameron tested. Bro, stop acting like you knew about raccoon poop without looking it up. I swear. Worms spread from his gut to the rest of his body. They attacked his lungs. That's what made him scream. I don't even care that he knew it was raccoon poop. It's the fact that he knew humans don't release it in their own fecal matter. If that information ever becomes useful to me for some weird way, I'm gonna send a thank you letter to the writers of the show. 
smack his eye and the muscles surrounding it, making his eyeball do a backflip. Laser photocoagulation to fix the eye and a high dose of benzamidazole to kill the worms. Just think about the sequence of events here. Child that's diagnosed with autism comes in screaming into the ER. House immediately starts running tests on him and finally gets down to it that he ate raccoon poop from a sandbox. How did we get here? I had a unique patient case myself. Click here for that full story. Doctors kept misdiagnosing this gentleman. See what happens here, click. As always, stay happy and healthy, but click.